Hello and welcome to Pro Football Game Day. I'm your host, Drew Brower, the King. And today I'm going to break down NFL Week 16 of the NFL regular season over the Christmas holiday. Hope you all enjoyed Christmas, especially Christmas Eve. It was sure entertaining to see some of NBA Christmas weekend in the NBA. We saw the Sixers go up against the Knicks, the Bucks go up against the Celtics, the Mavs go up against the Lakers, and the as I was showing last night here on Sports Cam, we had a record high uh, milestone of live viewers. Thanks, thanks to you guys, really appreciate it. But uh, had had done some commentary on the Golden State Warriors and Memphis Grizzlies game, which you can check out here at youtubecom forward slash user forward slash Sports Cam TV. So even though NBA Christmas weekend was fun, we we saw some NFL games, and the first game I'm gonna get to in a sec is very soon. Although make sure to follow Sports Cam here on Twitter at Sports Cam TV. Also make sure to find us here on Facebook at, at on Facebook at Sports Kingdom TV. You can also find Sports Cam TV at us on social media, at Sports Cam TV on Twitch, Instagram. We are all over the place. So let's first get started with the Jaguars and Jets. This game occurred actually on Thursday, Thursday night football. We saw Zach Wilson struggle against pressure and lose for the New York Jets. After the game, it's been said that Robert Salah has – reach the point of no return with Zach Wilson. It could it could be very well very well the case. Now we see the Jets move forward without J- Wilson. We saw after a couple years them part ways with Sam Darnold and it looks like now they may very well part ways with Zach Wilson. Look what Sam Darnold did though this weekend. He led the, the Camp Panthers to a victory. I think I think some of the Panthers' return to somewhat legitimacy is the fact that the, co- the coaching was off. The coaching was off, and you could argue Steve Wilkes has been doing a pretty solid job and coaching up the team and winning some games down the stretch, even though they are not going to make the playoffs. It was the coldest game ever at U.S. Bank, Bank Stadium in Carolina. And you just have to understand that Sam Darnold is a very, very good addition to the Panthers. I really think he can um, play really good if – if it comes time to next year, if he if the Panthers decide to move forward with Sam Darnold or go all, go go in an entirely different direction, but as I said, the Jets lost three to nineteen against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence he put in another hot game. He led the way with his team here and was able to. Escape pressure, handed off to Travis Etienne at times, and find those close to him in the end zone. He he did really well as well as Doug Pearson. They're now seven and eight, looking to win the AFC South. They could very well win the AFC South after the Texans defeated the Tennessee Titans. I think I predicted the Tennessee Titans to lose to the Texans. I wasn't quite so surprised. And after the game, Malik Willis with three interceptions and no passing touchdowns had gone on to say it was it was one down game. And we can we can move forward from this, but um, I just I just don't seem to believe in this Titans team right now. I just think the Titans are. A little bit vulnerable, especially after losing their general manager and what shocked uh, some people. The 
Joe manager was was fired. AJ Brown was traded away, and Ryan Tannehill has been dealing with certain injuries this season. He's always been dealing with certain injuries in his career, which begs the question: what, where where are the Tennessee Titans going from here? If if they lose out the rest of the way and and have Jacksonville win the a- AFC South. Um, Titan, Titans are going to have to put in the extra leg work this offseason if they're going to come back strong. Even though I believe the Texans stand, stand a much better chance to have a really better season than the Titans next year, I, I could foresee the Titans letting go so most of their, most of, letting go of most of their veterans when you include Derrick Henry, Ryan Tannehill, and several others on, on the defense. Commanders and 49ers. The 49ers won 37 to 20. Let me see, by the way, if we have any comments here. Um, I'll look who we have here. Uh, Gaming with Zia. Um, um, oh, my audio. What's what's going on with my audio? Um, give me one sec, guys. We usually have technical difficulties sometimes with our audio. Okay, well... Um, don't know what that was all about, but uh, our audio seems to be working pretty well. Um, can you shut me out? Uh, sure. Um, everyone go check out Gaming with... Oh, uh, it says Zilla. Um, go check him out, everyone. Um, I have a game my cha- gaming channel myself as well, twitch.com or twitch.tv. Forward slash sports cam TV forward slash um there you can find me um whether it's sports cam TV on, on Twitch or or uh um Center Monster twenty one. So back to more games here. By the way, you tell me in the comment section what you thought of Nathaniel Hackett. Losing his job in Denver after a four eleven start, only only coaching fifteen games shortest since shortest in franchise history since Wade Phillips. You figure maybe maybe this is a wake up call for the Denver Broncos when Wade Phillips was fired back in the early nineties. Then came Mike Shanahan. Mike Shanahan, of course, had success with John Elway and and Denver. He was a callous other than a uh, Nathaniel Hackett or Wade Phillip. Um, you know, the, Bro- the Broncos have obviously been in and out with coaches these past years, but they're hoping to get back on, get back on track with Russell Wilson with a five-year deal up to $245 million. So as I was saying, the commanders and 49ers, the commanders lost to the Niners 20 to 37. And who could who could possibly foresee the Niners losing to the Commanders? The, the Niners are alone for arguably the best team in in the NFC, in my opinion, right now. Brock Purdy, he Outplayed Washington, the Washington Commander, Washington Commanders quarterback Tyler Heineke. I've been high on Heineke for for weeks now. I think if he, even if he loses his job in Washington, he still has a place in the NFL thanks to uh, the comeback against Philadelphia and leading Washington to a winning streak. I mean, he could very well go elsewhere in the league. Unlike unlike the XFL or USFL, I can't see him going to or going back to the USFL or XFL. I could really see him going to another team, a different team, or stay in Washington, 
Ron Rivera made it clear that he's not so sure about who's going to start between Carson Wentz and and Taylor Heineke. So, nonetheless, the Niners picked up the win. Nick Bosa picked up his 17th sack of the year. He's he's leading the league in sacks and proven why he uh, deserves uh, NFC. Defensive player of the year. Eagles, Cowboys, Cowboys won against the Eagles 40 to 34. Well, what, what can I say? The Eagles came short against Dallas. The Eagles did have some pretty good games from Devontae Smith with a thousand yard receiving yards of the season. Devontae Smith, I've been Complain about every here and there. He's he's done pretty well for himself, regardless. Being next to AJ Brown, AJ Brown is is obviously a better wide receiver from my perspective. But but it was on one last drive the Eagles tried to push it into the end zone for another touchdown, extra point that would have cost the Cowboys the game, but the Eagles, they they uh, even though they wanted to win this game, they, they got to keep their heads high. They won against a really good team in Dallas. I think Dallas will, will I think we'll possibly see the Eagles and Dallas Cowboys go up against one another come time playoffs. I think I think it's irresistible irresistible inevitable that that we could very well see the Eagles and Cowboys face off in the playoffs sometime again. As both coaches were saying after the game, they they shook hands and and said said to each other that they'd see see each other back in a game down the line. Mike McCarthy, um, um, I'm quite surprised he's reached it this far, but what what can I say? He he's been to the Super Bowl before with Aaron Rodgers. Now he's coaching up Dak Prescott. And Prescott is putting in some solid performances, even though the the past couple weeks have been have been rough on him. Ezekiel had another great game, played better than Tony Pollard this time. Zach Martin, he uh, looked like he was going to come come out of the game at one point, but but he was able to stay in along with the rest of that def- offensive line, Dallas, and it was quite odd seeing former Eagle Jason Peters on the Dallas Cowboys sideline. I mean, JP, you were – you were a lifelong eagle, and you still will be. Once it's all said and done, he'll he'll go down the Hall of Fame as, as an all-time Eagles great. You you take a look at the Cowboys defense. Drawn drawn curse. He put in some excellent performance. He likes to. Especially get pressure on the on the quarterback with Michael Parsons. Those two, the the Cowboys like to use those two and and their speed and go after the quarterback. Put put their fastest players near the line and uh, of scrimmage and run after the quarterback. But which they which they mostly accomplished when. Garmin, she went down within the one seconds of the game. I mean, the Eagles, they they could definitely play better with Jalen Hurts in the lineup. Uh, Jalen Hurts can flat out run the ball, of course, and I think his game complements Miles Sanders' game a lot. Miles Sanders, as much as he likes to use Jason Kelsey and certain run concepts. I think I think 
without John Hurts, there's no Miles Sanders. There's no. There's no uh, regular Eagles that's going to win 13 football games. So I was I was quite intrigued by how the Eagles played, but there's a reason. There's a reason why Jalen Hurts is is up there in the MVP race right now. He or Joe Burrow can can arguably win the race and go on to do some really good things. So next game, Raiders and Steelers. Steelers won by a final score of 13 to 10. Before this game, Franco Harris was honored by the crowd and, and players. Franco Harris has died suddenly and now, LPGA golfer Whitworth uh, died suddenly. God, I wonder what what's really going on lately. Is the surge of COVID or what surged up? Um, but uh, I make mean, I mean. It was just reported they died suddenly, so I just assume that it it could be COVID related. But um, but uh, the Steelers they they won thirteen to ten, seven eight, still have a shot at the playoffs, and the Raiders, meanwhile, um. The Raiders, they uh, they tried to outrun, outpace the Steelers. Derek Carr, someone was saying, it, it has has had enough time to prove himself in Oakland's or Las Vegas. Has literally been almost nine years now. He's been part of the team, and the Raiders just haven't really been able to get things going. I think Josh McDaniels will be smart enough to realize that the Raiders should should probably aim to find a better quarterback going into the offseason as the team all around it did a pretty solid job this year and trying to make a run down the stretch even though they lost to the Steelers and became eliminated. One team that's not eliminated is the Packers. The Packers just when you thought would lose lose out the entire entire way and miss the playoffs. They went on to win against the Dolphins twenty six to twenty. Aaron Rodgers, he he had quite a day. He <sighs> missed uh on one connection to Lazard uh Aaron Rodgers he He made some mistakes, just like Tua, but when it all came down to the end, the the Packers were able to get the W, and that's what matters. They they held a better chance at making the playoffs still with a seven eight record. The Dolphins, meanwhile, they they have to get back on their hitch horse if they're gonna win win out the rest of the way and head into the playoffs. Broncos, Rams. 51-14 to 14 loss by the Broncos. And losing to the Rams, 51, 51, 14-51 is quite embarrassing for the Denver Broncos offense in particular. This offense has been arguably the worst this year. And you take a look at their points per game. They are last in points per game. And... So the Broncos, they need to focus heavily on making new, new changes in the offseason. They no longer have Pat Bowen, uh Hall of Fame owner of the Denver Broncos. 
they they now do have uh, Rob Walton, the the owner of Walmart, and oh, Bronco fans are gonna want better talent surrounded by Russell Wilson. They're gonna want to upstart that offense again and play the same D as they've been playing all year long. Their D has been. Okay, even though they lost and gave up 51 points to the Rams, uh, Baker Mayfield came ready and prepared and shows why the, the Rams decided to sign him. There's been some talk lately that Sean McVay may very well be leaving after this season, so if that's true, I, I'd expect he'd He'd say I deal with ESPN or Coach Elsewhere. I think I think he's gonna sign with ESPN possibly. I think I think a lot of the comparisons of John Gruen are pretty much right right on. Um, the guy's the guy can read X's and O's and be a pretty good analyst. Um, and final game. Cardinals, Buccaneers. I watched over overtime in this game and saw the Buccaneers come out top nineteen to sixteen. Cardinals dropped to four and eleven. They, they definitely got to reevaluate what they're going to do come time this off season. Are they going to keep around Kyle Murray? I think they are. Um, are they going to? There are some players like Zach Ertz or DeAndre Hopkins. I mean, there are there are a good amount of veterans on this team, and uh, I could see a lot of changes in Arizona. But the Buccaneers, in the meantime, are on pace to make the playoffs and win the NFC South. They have. Done. They uh, they have done quite well to this point. Was I, I, look, looking back throughout this whole entire season now. Has Todd Bowles been the right coach? I, I don't necessarily think so. I think Byron Leftwich should be the head coach of this team right now. He he has helped Tom Brady in that offense come as far as they have from from my perspective. Throwing their defense, they they uh, definitely have some things to work on. As this about does it for Sports Kingdom Pro Football Game Day. I've been your host, Julian Bradley King. Just want to make sure, real quick, covered all all the games. Oh no, we did not cover all the games. Uh, my bad. Um, Ravens Falcons for Ravens. One over the Falcons, seventeen to nine. How Tyler Huntley had a really good day, and it's showing why he could possibly start with the Baltimore Ravens or elsewhere. Lamar Jackson dealing with a nagging injury right now. I could foresee him going to Tyler Huntley. Could foresee him, or could could foresee Lamar Jackson playing come time this postseason. Or 10 and 5, I think with Roquan Smith, Sammy Watkins just add to the squad. Devin du- Duvernay. This Ravens seems pretty good. It's, it's not it's not it's not so bad at all. If their guys could stay healthy, I could see them win a playoff game or two th- this postseason. Lions, Panthers, we we discussed Bills, Bears. Not so high on Justin Fields, three and twelve, and ha- just has to win ball games in Chicago. That that's what it all boils down to. Even though their secondary did limit the Bills in the passing game, the Bills were able to find success with Josh Allen, James Cook, and Devin Singletary rushing for most of the day. Saints Browns. 
I think Browns fans have had enough of Deshaun Watson already. So have I. The whole saga has just been a whole complete mess up, in my opinion. And could have received Deshaun Watson testing the waters next year in free agency. Seahawks Chiefs. Chiefs won over the Seahawks 24 to 10. Uh, a lot, a lot of credit has to be given to the Chiefs' pass rush. Patrick Mahomes, he he relied uh, a lot on Travis Kelsey. Travis Kelsey and, and Kadarius Tony. We did see some highlights out of Kadarius Tony. As I said last week, they clinched a playoff spot. So this was a nice win as right now the Bills and Chiefs are battling for a number one spot in the AFC conference trying to get home field advantage and a playoff bye. Angles, Patriots, Patriots, some embarrassing plays drawn up here, drawn up in this game by Bill Belichick and as Bill Belichick took the blame for a loss against the Bengals, so just some questionable plays with Mac Jones and Ramondre Stevenson in the winding stages of the, of the game. As the Bengals won 22 to 18, and uh, I just covered about every game. Uh, Except for tonight's game between the Colts Chargers, that should be a good game for the Chargers and uh, Giants of Vikings. Giants experienced a shooting apparently in the Mall of America. Unfortunately, um, the Giants, however, sucked it up and played football against the Vikings and and. Uh, Went on to lose. We did see a good day out of Saquon Barkley, Darius Slayton, but the Vikings with Josh Justin Jefferson now the leading receiving yards receiver in Vikings franchise history. Let me just say that again. Justin Jefferson is the leading receiving yards receiver in Minnesota all time franchise history. He surpassed Chris Carter. He sur- he's now surpassed Randy Moss. I mean, this guy has to be the best LSU wide receiver from LSU when you compare him to guys like Jarvis Landry or or another LSU Tiger and Odell Beckham. Justin Jefferson is just on another level right now, and so is TJ Hawkins, and those two contributed very well for the Vikings as the Vikings won over the Giants in a close one. 27 24 marked this game marked the Vikings 11th win in one score games this entire season. An impressive feat to say at least as the Vikings looking to go one step further and reach a Super Bowl. That's about as high as the ceiling that you could put on the ceiling or the Vikings right now. This is about does it for Pro Football Game Day. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to Sports Cam TV here on YouTube if you enjoyed the show. If you enjoyed the show, give us a thumbs up. This is about does it for Sports Cam TV. Thank you guys and peace out.